Hey guys, I know it's been a while, it's been a couple weeks since my last recording. I usually try to put an episode out once a week, um, but I've been busy and uh, you guys don't care, so on with the show. <laughs> um, to all my new listeners, thank you for checking in um, and thank you for subscribing, really appreciate you. Today, I want to talk to you about this book called God's Debris. Um, and that's probably not going to be the only thing I talk about, but that's what I'm going to start off with. And in that book, it was mentioned to me by one of my subscribers on my TikTok channel. Um, shout out to Reggie Baum, uh, for, for commenting on it. I, I love book recommendations, um, especially if I haven't read it before. And, uh, that book did not disappoint. There was an exercise on there that, gave me pause, um, that made me stop and go, oh, okay, touche, I see you, I see you. See, here's the thing. The, the purpose of this podcast and my other podcast, uh, The Dark Oracle's Guide to the Multiverse, is that ultimately my, my underlining drive in life is to get people to think. And my motives may not be uh, pure. Um, the reason why I want people to think is because I'm fucking tired, excuse my French, of having conversations with people that revolve around the weather. Please stop. I've said this before. Don't talk to me about the weather. There is so much happening in this world, guys. This world is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Even if you just look from a materialistic perspective, right? We're not even talking about the psi phenomenon. We're not talking about UFOs. We're not talking about aliens. We're not talking about simulation hypothesis. We're not talking about determinism. We're not talking about philosophy. We're just, just, just look at a flower. That's amazing, you know, right? Like, look at the sky. Look at the sunset. We get port, we get paintings painted for us every night by the simulation. Um, beautiful beautiful and we want to talk about how does it feel outside please don't talk to me about the weather guys i i don't want to hear it i hate small talk it is a waste of time so yes my underlying purpose behind this podcast is to get people to start having deep conversations start getting comfortable with the uncomfortably deep conversations like i want to i want to i want to sit down and have a conversation with with the person that looks at you and go like you know what do you think happens to you when you die? Like, yo, give me, give me, like, give me, yeah, high five me. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like fist bump, man. That, that's what I'm talking about. How can you live in this world with all that's happening? You're just, you know, like a, a horse with blinders on. That's not meant to be a criticism. I'm saying society puts the blinders on our minds and our minds move like horses with blinders on. And we, we don't, we're, we, we keep everything surface and we're afraid to go deep. And why? Because it's scary? Be scared. Most people are already scared. Most people are anxious out of their goddamn mind of, of things that they cannot control. Be scared. But think. You know, think deeply. Start asking questions. You know, so any book that I come across that... And this rarely happens, but when it does, like, I, I love it. It's just, it's a warm, cozy, fuzzy feeling. I feel in my chest. I want to hug the writer. <laughs> I just want to, like, give them a high five because, like, thank you. You just open a box in my mind. You open up a room, a door in my brain, you know, that was, like, a jar. And you just kick that shit down, and I'm grateful for that. I love that. And I, that's why I read. I constantly read. At this point, as my regular listeners know... I listen to audiobooks at what 3.5x speed, 3 to 3.5, depending on the narrator. And I go through about four to six books, no joke, a week. Okay, sometimes I'll go back and I'll reread some of my favorite books because, like, every time I re listen to a book, like, I get something new out of it. But I, you talk to me, you bring up a subject, I probably have read a couple of books on it. And that's fun for me. Right, because ultimately I'm trying to understand the nature of this reality. And so I'm pulling from theology, I'm pulling from philosophy, I'm pulling from quantum physics, psychology. And I'm I you know, these if I could take all of this stuff, like I'm, on, I'm an artist, so if I could take all of these books and put it together, right? Subjects that don't typically communicate, right? You have quantum physicists, 
who aren't really maybe talking to mediums about what's happening, right? But they're all saying the same thing. You know, you have Gnostics that maybe don't align with Buddhists, but they're all saying the same thing. But if I could take all of what is being said and shove it into my brain and form, you know, a, a unifying like theme, so I can start understanding what happens in this world, what is happening in this world, what happens after we die, what is this reality, I'm all for it. So anything that opens up my mind, it opens up a room in my brain, like I love it, like give it to me please. And so I'm constantly reading. So much so that I actually got an email from Audible telling me I need to stop returning books, <laughs> which touche, it's fair. I mean, it's been a few years. Um, so I get it, but I, I maxed out their return policies. They're like, we're going to stop you from returning books if you don't stop. And I get it. Um, because I'm reading so much. And if I read a book and I'm not, if I don't like it, I don't get anything out of it. I don't feel like the author gave me anything. I will return the book. Um, because I'm not going to go read, read it again. So I don't want a book in my library. That's just going to sit in my library. I didn't get anything of it. It's a waste of money. I want my credit back. Um, I guess that's not what they want. <laughs> like they want you to return a book because like it's skipped or you don't, you know, like the narrator or whatever. I don't know. Um, but gosh, if there's a service, I'm not trying to like, you know, poo poo on, on Audible, but if somebody wants to come up with a service that allows you to like rent audiobooks, um, like a library and you can literally just limit it to like unlimited supply of books, I will pay the fee. Like I don't care. Um because like just for avid readers, uh, I, I would be all over that. I mean, nothing against Audible, but it's just, I don't think it's set up for people who like are on the path that I'm on. And I'm like, when you say, when you say I'm a prolific reader, I am a prolific reader. I love it. It, it. There's two things in this world that I enjoy doing the most. And one of it is reading and the other one is painting. Um, I could do that for all eternity and, and be perfectly happy. Um, so I'm saying all that to say this, like if you're following me or you came over from my TikTok and you have a good book that you think that would open up a door in my mind and I haven't read it before, drop it in the comments. I love that because um, then I can read, I can speed read the book and then come talk to you guys about it and tell you how it ties into maybe other stuff that I've read that you may not have read. So I'm constantly talking about different books on the podcast for sure, for sure. But God's debris. I don't want to ruin the conclusion of the book. It's a short story, but you should read it. But there was one chapter that I love because, you know, we wake up, we wake up in this society, we wake up in this world, we're programmed to think certain things, right? And we don't necessarily question what we've been programmed until we get older, hopefully. Not everybody. Like most people don't question. Most people will live their whole lives just on default setting, no free will, constantly just reacting to their programming, their biology, their environment, not, you know, their random thoughts that pop into their heads. They're just, they're just choo, 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 you know, and, and that's fine. It's nothing against them. Um, I'm just blessed and lucky to be in this incarnation and in this avatar that wants to have an expanded view in this reality and wants to know what happens after we live this, leave this world because I am determined not to come back here only because, um, I've done this a lot. I feel like I've been here before. I'm a life path seven. Like, I, like it's, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I've even been reading about, they're not, not really new revelations to me. They more feel like I'm remembering, like I'm being reminded of something that I had forgotten in like a past life. And most people who know me know that I'm a strange mix of like logical and like spiritual. And I'm even hesitant to use the word spiritual. I just can't think of another word for it. So people like don't know what to do with me. And I think that has a lot to do with the life, my life path that I'm on, which is a seven. And that's what it is. It's logical and spiritual. And there's a conflict there. I don't know what, you know, why, but it's there. Um, but this paragraph in God's debris, like left me shooketh. Like I was shooketh. Um, because I was like, yo, this is, this is truth. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna get to it. Cause I, I've been dancing around it. I'm gonna get to it. So check this out. So we define God in two words, right? We say God. And and before I, I get into this, I don't think that the creator of this world is a male. I don't think that the creator of this world is a single entity. Okay. But I'm, so when I say the term God and I say the term he, I'm only speaking in the way that the West has come to quote, understand or define God. Okay. So bear that in mind. It's not a reflection of how I perceive the creator of our reality. Um, but check this out. So he says, so we define God as 
omniscient, which is all knowing, it has science in it, so knowledge, right? Omni meaning all. So omniscient and omnipotent and potent meaning powerful, all powerful. So we define God as God is all knowing and all powerful, omniscient and omnipotent. Here's a problem. Here's a problem. If God is omniscient, right, then that would mean he would know everything, right, including his own future, okay? Even if you believe in the multiverse hypothesis, which I do, it doesn't matter. If you're able to see into your future, it's like that Rick and Morty episode where Rick had that, uh, not Rick, uh, Morty had that diamond on his forehead and he saw all the possible outcomes <laughs> and was able to choose, right? But the, 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 the outcome that he wanted was to be, he wanted to end up with the girl that he had a crush on and have her by his side, right? Okay. But he was able to see all the possible futures and then he knew which one he was going to choose. Okay. So imagine God is like that. God has that same vision where he sees all of his pros- all of his probable futures, right? But then he knows because he's all knowing, he knows exactly the path he's going to take, right? That would mean that his future is predetermined. And if his future is predetermined, then he is bound by that path, which means that no matter what he does, he's going to, he basically going to be aligned with that path, which means that God has no free will. And if he has no free will, then he's not all powerful. So him being defined as omniscient essentially negates his omnipotence. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, it took me, I, 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 I've been playing with this. This has been great for my brain. Like my brain has been like, this is delicious. I'll say that again. If he knows his own future, right? He, he can see all probable futures ahead, right? All the, oh, yeah, he could take this path. He could create this people, but he knows I'm going to create this, you know, this reality in this way. And this is the path. I'm going to create the multiverse and I'm going to create the simulation and this is how I'm going to design it. And it's going to be bipedal humans. And that's exactly what he does. Then that means that his path is laid out and he is bound to lay out, to live that path. No matter, even if you go, okay, fuck it. Then, well, what if he just doesn't go on that path? Okay. Whatever path he takes, (laughs) right? He knows what he's going to take and it's predetermined. Determined. If he can see his own future, if he can know his own future, then that future is predetermined, which makes him subject to fate, which would make him not all powerful because fate would be more powerful than God. And the Greeks had this. When I, when I read this, I, I could think of like the Greeks because the Greeks, Greeks would always say that even the gods we're subject to fate, which makes you makes should make us pause and go, okay, he can't be omniscient. God can't be all knowing and all powerful. Is either he knows everything, and that's fine. So he's an immortal who knows everything, right? But he's definitely not all powerful, right? Because he can't even change his own fate. So that means fate is more powerful than the creator because he has to do what he more or less is destined to do. It's predetermined by our definition of what God is. Okay, pause. Next, okay, let's say he goes, no, okay, I don't want to know my own future, right? I want to withhold my power to be omniscient, to be all-knowing, right? I want to blind myself to my fate, right? Which is what most of us are, right? A lot of us are, we get up in the morning, we, we are on this path, right? We know where we want to go in life. A lot of us do, right? But we're blind. We just, we, we, we're blind to how we're going to get there, right? So we're not omniscient. We're not all knowing. We, we, we know what we want for the most part, but some of us may not get to, the, we're going to deviate. We're going to get distracted. You know, things are going to happen or whatever. And some of us might, but we don't, we can't see our own future. Even people who are psychic can only see blips of our future because we're human. Okay. So imagine God decides I'm going to withhold my ability to see the future, right? I'm going to withhold my omniscience, right? 
because somehow he thinks by not being able to see his own future, it would make him so that he has free will because he's not subject to fate. No, he, he, he would still be subject to fate <laughs> because he wouldn't be able to see, just because you can't see your future doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Right? Unless he just goes, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, but that within itself is still a determined choice. And he would know that, that he was going to do that. And so he's just like, boom, stuck, subject to fate. So even if he withhold, withholds his own omniscience, right, just so that he can maintain some sort of illusion of free will, all he does is blind himself to his own future. He's still going to make those choices that he saw himself making when he was omniscient right? But he just would be blind to it. That's not all powerful because he wouldn't even have the power. He not By negating his omniscience, right? By, by making himself not all knowing, he would also make himself not all powerful. So negating his omniscience would also negate his omnipotence. So then he would be back to square off, probably worse off because now he can't see. So the least, the, the best that we could say by our definition of God, the creator of this reality, is that he's just all-knowing. But he's, he's not all-powerful because he can't change his own fate. Based on everything I've just said, it's gonna, you got to listen to this. If you got to repeat this so it sinks in, because I, <laughs> I, I've been chewing on this, masticating on this. It has been good for my brain because I've been trying to figure out work, you know, a way to work around so that he can be omniscient, which is all knowing and still be all powerful. But if you, if I sit here and I know, I know, I know that when I'm done with this podcast, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to eat some dinner. That's my fate. Unless I get struck by a fucking <laughs> meteor right now. Okay. All right. Let's just say that right now I, I've got a blip of God's energy and I can see my future. Right. And I could do other things, but the probability of me doing other things, though, are small. The likelihood is that I more than likely, I'm not going to finish this and then decide to go out the back of my house and then go to my car and drive around 13 times and then come and go to, go to, I'm not going to fucking do that. I mean, I could do that just, (laughs) just to, to be like, I'm free. But the probability of me doing that is incre is is incredibly small. Like I I'm, I'm slated to take a specific path and just because of who I am, that's just what the fuck I'm going to do. Even if I can see that and I know, okay, there's a probability is like a 99% chance that I'm going to go upstairs and have my, have dinner. And then there's a, 1% 1% chance that I'm going to go out the back and go for a drive. And I could see both 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 choices, right? So let's say I'm God and I could see both choices. I know because I know everything. I know that I'm going to choose to go, you know, quote choose. I'm putting choose because eh, it's is it really a choice? <laughs> I have to eat. It's what I do every day. It's what I've always done, right? So is it really a choice? But okay, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's who I am. This is a program. It's my programming. I'm not the kind of person to break protocol. I'm not the kind of person that's going to do that 1% thing and just get in my car and fucking drive because I'm just not. It's, not. it's not in my programming. So I'm not really free to make this, the, the other choice, that 1%. That's why it, the probability of me doing that is at 1% because it's just not in my, quote, programming to do that. So I could see that. I know what I'm going to do. And I'm going to finish this podcast. I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to eat a fucking sandwich. Probably not a sandwich. I'm I'm gluten intolerant, but, <laughs> but you know what I mean? But you see that? Like, okay, so I can see this. I'm psychic, but I'm still subject to fate. And my free will is it's 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 an illusion and i posted this on my tiktok and people have been really in their feelings like there's some there's a lot of people that got on there and they're like yes i've been saying this and like i love those people because they're real like it's real like you you're not in control (laughs) we're not in control here i mean the control that we do have is it's extremely limited it just isn't but it it it, and it, and it, it takes the form of probability because we're in a simulation 
It, it just it is what it is. But if it makes you feel better, like somebody was like, well, I could just watch my thoughts all the time and choose to constantly do what I want. Okay, good luck with that. In fact, like I, I wish you could do that because that's what I've been busting my ass every day, meditating for one to two hours every day to just stop my thoughts from, from fucking going off of a simple mantra just to sit for 10 minutes. I don't I don't start out going, I'm going to meditate for an hour, guys. Okay, I start out going, I'm going to meditate for like 15 minutes. I'm going to repeat this mantra 10 times. And it's, Hi, Rama, Hi, Rama, 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 holy shit. I got to check my phone. Wait, stop, come back. Like it's, bring it back. Bring it back. I can't even focus on just saying the same mantra without my mind wandering off to something else. And I I make a daily practice of this. And people that you know they're not meditating, because you can tell by their responses, it's very reactionary and they're very emotional, right? You you know that they're not. And they're saying, I could do this. I, I have control. I have free will. Okay, cool. Bet. You do you. It, whatever makes you feel better at night. You know what I mean? Like if you do have that level of control, sensei, like, yo, teach me your ways because I am struggling. <laughs> okay. Like, like it's just, a, I mean, I've got ADD on top of that. So just to complete a task that I started is a battle. Okay. I can paint a masterpiece, right? But to just get up in the morning, get up out of bed and go in the shower, <laughs> not check my email, exercise, do laundry, just get up and go straight to the shower. That is difficult for me. That is a battle. And I'm consciously fighting it on a daily basis, okay? And I I hope to one day be able to exercise a modicum of free will, but as it stands right now, it's a daily battle. It's a daily battle. But back to God's debris. So yeah, if God is omniscient, meaning if he's all-knowing, then he can't be all-powerful because he would be subject to, to basically determinism. His, his future would be determined, and he would know it. And that's that. He could see his own future. And if he could see his own future, then it's basically predetermined, and he's got to do what he's got to do. Right? Boom. Um, if he decides to not see his own future, it doesn't matter. His future's still there. Just because you blindfold yourself to something doesn't mean it, it ceases to exist, Right? Maybe him being all powerful, he goes, okay, I'm going to destroy fate. Okay, fine. What does that look like? He's still going to know what he's going to do, right? So I destroy fate. Okay, so he destroys fate and fate goes, okay, like, fine, you, you, you can do whatever you want. He's still going to know what he's going to do, which is the definition of fate. Either that or he doesn't know what he's going to do, which means he's not all powerful. You see this? Now, at this point, some people might be tempted to think, like, I'm trying to say there's no God. And anybody who's been listening to my podcast, like, and you made it this far, like, big ups to you guys. I love you. Honestly, like, you guys are awesome. Like, thank you for listening to my rants. Um, But, um, no, I'm not trying to say that this means that there's no God. Um, or no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that our definition and our understanding of, of the nature of the creator of this universe, of this world, of this simulation is extremely flawed. I I think of it as like the human, you know how like a, a child, when you're a kid, you look at your parents, you, if you're a boy, you look at your dad as Superman and you look at your mom as like, just like this awesome person, right? And then as you get older, you start to look and go, wow, they're, they're actually human. Like, they're not perfect. But in, in your mind as a child, they were like Superman. Like, they could do no wrong. I remember the first time I caught my dad lying. And I was like, bro, you fucking lie. <laughs> what are you telling me not to lie? But you're lying. Like, you're lying. And that shattered my tiny little brain because in my mind, like, Adults were perfect humans and children were imperfect humans. And if you work really hard, you could grow up to be a perfect human. And, and then I looked at him and realized like, you're, 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 you're just a bigger version of me. You're, you're lying. And that like, I had to really sit with that. And I think that we're, we need to come to terms with, with that and apply that to our definition of who the gods are. And, and, and then very straightforward. I think that we tend to elevate things that are bigger than us that we just don't understand, right? Either we we demonize it because we're intimidated by it. Like I've had a couple of people make some crazy 
comments on my TikTok. I'm not used to that because I don't typically put myself out there, my face out there. Um, even on my Instagram, I've never posted like my pictures really, um, because it's very private about that. Um, and I've started as I've started doing the TikTok, it's just me just trying to get my message out there so I can reach more people and do more, you know. But gosh, a couple people have said stuff that's like, oh, like somebody said like your hands don't match your face. You're not a real person. Like somebody typed that out in a comment and hit enter. And I was like, I have lights on my face. <laughs> so like, of course my face is going to be brighter than my hands. I don't have lights on my hands. I have light on my face. How do you get that? How do you go A plus B equals Z? You're not making any sense. And of course, I'm not going to take the time to respond to people like that because if there's if there's a lack of logic there, they're not going to respond to logic. So I'm not going to try to make you more logical by using logic. I just delete and block because that's just weird, you know. But if they can't, if people can't understand you, they just like elevate you. Like a couple people are like, are you a time traveler? Yes. Maybe I am. I don't fucking know. Look, I just finished watching the OA. Who knows? Maybe I shifted from a parallel universe and I've, you know, I've incorporated or suppressed, you know, the the consciousness of whoever, you know, Joe was before I took her over and now I'm speaking through her. I don't know. Okay. I I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm an alien. I don't know. But that's not the point. <laughs> I'm half joking. I'm also very serious, but that's not the point. Um, the point is that human beings tend to elevate things that are like not like they seem just beyond their understanding, their scope of understanding. Why do I know the things that I know? Well, it could, it's simple. I could have reincarnated so many fucking times that at a certain point, like there's just some shit that's stuck. And so when I speak to you guys with certainty, it's because I'm remembering my past lives. Now, just because you don't believe that past lives exist, just because you don't believe in reincarnation doesn't mean what I'm saying is false. It just means that you need to open your minds a little bit more because there are people who swear up and down that they do remember their past lives. And there are accounts, scientific studies that have been done and lodged of people, children who do remember their past life. Just because it's not something that's new to you or something that's familiar to you doesn't mean it's wrong, okay? And so let's let's throw that in there. And then let's throw in a dash of, I read a lot, (laughs) okay? So I can speak with confidence on things because I read a lot. And a lot of the stuff I read are written by doctors and, and, and scientists and PhDs and psychologists who who started out from um, you know a scientific background and then they opened up their minds and expanded their minds. And those are the people whose work I seek out, right? Because they're not just like, oh, believe me, because I talked to some spirit guide from like planet 444 or whatever. They're like, no, I started out with the basis, uh, you know, with a foundation of math and science, and I approached this idea, you know, logically, scientifically, and I've come to this conclusion. Those are the people I seek out, and those are the people that I listen to, and they help me reinforce the knowledge that I've carried from past reincarnations into this one. It's not woo woo. It's not. It's not like scary. We just live in this world right now that forces you to see things in a particular way, very dual. Like it's either you fit in this box or, you, or it fits in this box. You can't blend the two, right? Like another person left a comment about like, I said that this is a simulation. They're like, why do you need all this techie stuff? Why can't you just say that this is a spiritual world and blah, blah, blah? Because it's a simulation. Like <laughs> that's the word I chose to use because that's what all the things point out to. And if you're still running off of like what was written a thousand years ago when they said, oh, this is a game or this is an illusion. Well, they didn't have a PSVR, so they couldn't say it's a simulation. They didn't have computers. Okay. If you gave the people who said that this world was an illusion, a PSVR, and they put the helmet on, they would go, oh, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is a simulation. I just didn't have the word for it. So I went with illusion. I went with dreams. The reason why I blend the two is because it should be blended. We're in a game. Okay. There is code writ in the fabric of our reality. Okay. And you could say that, okay, consciousness is a spirit. Okay. But you can also say it's a non-corporeal entity. Okay. You could say that, you know, it's, it's information, right? 
they're we're using two different languages to describe the same thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying it's 2021. Maybe speak to people in, in terminology that now there's technology to support what you're saying. And that's what I'm doing and will continue to do because that's what makes sense to me. So to go back to God's debris, it's not that there is no God. It's that if this is a simulation, then the creators of the simulation are just as fallible as we are, just as flawed as we are. Why? Because this world is flawed. It's beautiful, but it's flawed, right? It has its mistakes. It has its issues. It has its errors. Even in just the encounters, near-death encounters, you, you a lot of people, when they have NDEs, they, some people have reported near-death experiences is what NDEs are, but some people have recorded that these entities that they encounter when they die are like cut off guard, like, oh shit, like that's a very human <laughs> behavior, okay? Like, oh shit, you, like, you weren't supposed to die, you have to go back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are you slipping on your job, bro? Right? But that doesn't strike me as an, oh, that's an angelic being that's not capable of making mistakes. And that sounds, that strikes me as a human being just in another dimension that made a mistake. Like we make mistakes down here. Like we have to really stop elevating everything. And in the past, I've used analogies of like uh, to us, to an iPhone, Steve Jobs is God, right? And if an iPhone could speak and had its own consciousness, the movie iRobot does a great, great job with this, right? The, the main character was a robot that Will Smith had a problem with. And the way he talked about his creator was like, he was like this great thing. But it was a very flawed, very human old man. You know what I mean? But it was a very smart man, right? So if, if, your, if your iPhone could talk, it would say Steve Jobs was like, you know, God. And he was all-knowing and all-powerful because he had to be, right? Because there's ego. In order to create something as awesome as I am, you had to be fucking perfect, right? That's the idea. That's how humans think. Like in order for, for, an, for something to have created us, right, this thing had to be perfect. It had to be better than us. It had to be just this brilliant entity that could do no wrong. But then when we write stories about them, it seems pretty human, right? From the Greeks to the Romans, to the Mayans, to, you know, the, you know, the uh, Christians, um, all of them, even the Nord, the Nordics, right? The, I'm thinking of, uh, Thor and them, Odin, you know, um, even in, in, in Africa, like, uh, uh, gosh, my brain's like farting right now. Um, all of the gods that all of, all of the cultures write about, right? They're all flawed. All of them. Right? They get jealous. Right? They get angry. Right, they get possessive. <laughs> uh, that should tell you something. You can't say this is an all-knowing, all-powerful God, and then turn around and say, "Like you shall have no other gods before me." Well, then stop me if you're all powerful. What I'm saying is, these are just stories that people throughout time have made up. They're not necessarily real, and they're not the accurate definition of what God is. And we need to start thinking outside of the box. And one thing that gets me when people comment um, is they go, uh, well, how, why do you think this? Well, this person said this and this thinker said that. And it's like somebody that they saw on YouTube or whatever. And, and I'm, always, I'm always, if you're polite, will respond with a book. But ultimately what I'm saying is, wh what I'm thinking is why can't you form your own conclusions? Like use... Like, like I'll, I had this video on quantum entanglement and a mirror self. I wanted to speak specifically about one particular reality. And I understand that there's like billions of parallel universes, but I wanted to speak with one particular reality that we are entangled with, right? U utilizing quantum entanglement to, to kind of explain the concept. And that episode was based off of a short story that I read called All the Myriad Ways, which I've talked about on the podcast. And I, I, finished, I finished reading that and I was like blown away. And it, I wove this, the narrative of All the Myriad Ways with the theory of quantum entanglement. And people were like, I need you to tell me the exact book 
that you got this story from this like I don't have a brain it didn't come from an exact book use your brain it came from like parallel worlds by Michio Kaku it came from our mathematical universe by Max Tegmark it came from the definition of quantum entanglement which is also described in Brian Greene's fabric of the cosmos it came from all the myriad ways by Larry Nevin and I took I read all of those And then that was the conclusion that I came to because I have a brain. So do you. Why do you need somebody to find, to tell you exactly what to think? Get these ideas, write your own ideas down and then have courage, have the courage of your conviction to say, well, this is my interpretation. This is my perception of what reality is. I mean, if it is, if it makes sense and you believe in it, Start off with your your premise and then you find the information out there to support what you believe. See, I have always thought that this reality was not what it seemed. And I've always felt it to be malleable if you work towards it. You, I've always known that. I've always operated on that premise. But what took me reading was because I can't sit and tell you, hey, this world is a simulation because most people don't want to listen to like, you. They want to listen to somebody with three letters behind their name telling you the same thing. So I started reading so that I could say, okay, well, this is what I think. But then here's like 18 other people with letters behind their name think the same thing. And then it makes people more likely to listen. And I also did that for myself because it's one thing I'm also in this society and I'm also, I'm also, I was also programmed with the mindset that if you're going to espouse a belief or you're going to believe something, you need to make sure that somebody with three letters behind their names, right, has said it first and has, you know, put it in a book, right? So that applies to me as well. But as I've gotten older, I realized like everything that I've read in a book, I'd already thought about, I'd already written about, I already spoke about on my podcast, I've already said on a YouTube video, I'd already put it on my Instagram years ago before I came across the book, book. So then I realized like, okay, my instincts are strong and I need to trust my own instincts. And yeah, I continue to read because every once in a while you come, you come up with things that just open up a room in your, in your mind. And I love that. Um, but what, what is at my core is a trust in my own experiences and not just in this lifetime and in this incarnation, but in the past as well. Okay. And some people are taken aback by like how I talk about this. Like to one of my friends, I was talking to one of my friends and she was like, oh, you're so this, you're so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And my response to her is I have no attachment to the form. I have no attachment to the form. I have no attachment to the face. I have no attachment to the body. I don't look in the mirror that much. I don't have a lot of selfies. My phone is filled with faces of other people because that's what I paint. Um, I, I, I What's the point? You know, I, I don't, I'm not identified. It's like a car. After a while, if you're just staring longingly at your car, it gets kind of creepy. It gets kind of weird. When I speak in a podcast, you know, I, I, I will use I in there, whatever, because I'm trying to convey a message. But when I type, I notice I actually take the word I out a lot, and especially in text, because what's the point? You know what I mean? It's just me. I'm just trying to communicate. Um, but to not be identified with the form I've, I've now just, that has been me on default. I just, to me, it's not, it's not that serious. And I don't pay too much thought, um, or I don't give too much thought as to how people perceive me. Sometimes to my detriment, because sometimes people have told me, well, you come off as A, or we perceive you as B or whatever. And my response is always, I am not responsible for how you perceive me, but I, you know, I wonder if I should just sort of play with that a little bit more and be more sensitive to that. I don't know yet. Um, but in, uh, there's a book, I, there's a book, two books that I've been reading. One I finished yesterday was called uh, Surviving Death um, by Leslie somebody. Um, it was good. It was interesting. She threw in some stuff about mediums and uh, seances and I, I'm not saying I don't believe in that. I'm just not really in the in the mental space to accept it. But it was entertaining, um, <sighs> informative, and entertaining um, in that regard. But now I'm also reading. I started today reading Life After Life. It's an older book by um, Raymond Moody, and that one is more. He's talking about how when people have near death experiences or death experiences. I mean, if we're being honest, 
um, what stories. And that's, that's that same, they all report the same thing where they, when they are out of their bodies, they look at the body as, okay, it's just this thing. Not all, most people. Some people get attached still to the form. Um, but a lot of people, when they are out of the body, they look down and they go, oh, that's just this thing, right? And then they also say, hmm, like the world that's outside of this world feels more real than this world. So to me, I've never left that I remember anyway. Um, I mean, when I dream and things like that, but I've never had that, you know, shocking near death experience where you just like leave your body and then you're like out of your body. So I can't really speak on that, but I do listen to those people and I do read about them because I think you can learn from that. Um, a lot about your experiences because, or, and the experiences you're going to have. Because look, I know we don't think this, but we're gonna we're all gonna die, okay? And for some people, you say that, and there's this panic there, and there's this fear, right? But for me, if it's if there is if there's a destination that I'm heading to, it's like I know I'm gonna get there, okay? I'm gonna spend my life preparing for that. It's inevitable. There's few things in this world that you know you're going to have to face, right? You know that if you stay up past a certain point, you're going to get tired and you're going to go to sleep. So it's probably a good idea to have a bed and a blanket. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's inevitable. You're going to, it's going to happen every night. So that's why we have beds. Um, you know, after a certain point of, of the day, you're going to be hungry. So it's probably a good idea to have food in your house right and be prepared for that point right and you know after your life is you're going to die so you should probably read as much as you can that the tibetans did this they 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 had this whole practice like to me it's goofy to dance around the subject and be afraid of it when it's going to happen and so that's another thing that's driving my consumption of like books and stuff to mentally prepare myself for something so that when I go into the situation, I'm alert and I'm aware and that the entities that I encounter, which you guys know how I feel about these people, um, to me, they're, they're just, they're human, just like us. The only thing that separates us from them is that somehow we are bound here, at least in our waking hours, at least in our waking hours being operative words. Okay. At least in our waking hours, but all the NDEs experiencers all say the same thing. Like, you know, th- there's this body and then there's this astral body. There's this body and then there's this light body or this body that's, you know, made of consciousness. So we are no different than the entities that we encounter when we die. It's just, we just like left the body and they've been without their bodies for a while. So why, why venerate them? Like that literally, like th- to me, they're equal. You know, when people talk about ghosts and like, oh, ghosts are scary, scary. Why? You're a ghost. You're just a ghost in a body. Call it whatever you want to call it consciousness or, or call it, you know, the psyche. You cannot tell me that consciousness is local to the brain. It's not. I'm sorry. It's not. Until you've read all of the books that I've read and had the experiences that I've experienced, do not come to talk to me. I, I'm not prepared to have a conversation with you. It's been 10 years I've been on this path, if not longer, honestly, probably longer. Um, don't talk to me. I, I don't want to hear anything you have to say. Consciousness is non-local and it never experiences death. Okay. You came into this world and you were told that death is asleep and that's all there is. Your body is all there is. And when it dies, that's it. Yeah. For the body... In this reality, in this one universe, but you're not your body. You're the consciousness. The brain is literally just a projector. It's, it's a transmitter and a projector. The I'm not making this up. Okay. Both physicists and neurologists have basically said the same thing. It's like a holographic projector. Google it. Okay. Materialists want to whittle down your experience to you being in the vehicle. That's annoying to me. To me, that's madness. That's like if I'm in an MMORPG, I'm playing Warcraft. Somebody comes up to me and says, you know, you're an orc, right? 
bro, get the fuck away from me. You're weird. <laughs> like, no, I'm not an orc. I'm just playing an orc. No, I'm not a human. I'm just playing a human. I'm a consciousness playing a human. I'm having this experience. So yes, at some point, your body is going to die. It's just your body. It's not you. It's not the end of you. You should not be afraid. Another thing is, when people experience death and come back, they all report the same thing. They all come back saying the same thing. Death is nothing to fear. Death is nothing to fear. Death is nothing to fear. It's almost like more peaceful over there than it is here. For whatever reason we're here, I choose to view it as some kind of game. It makes sense to me to to be a game because I'm the kind of person where I could understand why I would come and play. Like I I, I could see it. I could see me coming here. Um, I used to, you know, you guys have heard me. I, I played with like, is this some kind of prison? You know what I mean? But I just, I don't think knowing how I am and who I am, I don't think like I would have, I'm not a person that, you know, would have done anything to warrant me to be punished for anything. I'm just not, but maybe that's just a persona of the body that I'm inhabiting right now. Who knows? Maybe my consciousness is like low key evil and this is my incarnation to kind of soften that shit up. Who knows? But I choose to just believe that I'm playing some sort of like world of humans, right? Um, Or ancestral projection. And when I go to sleep, you know, I, I maybe log out of this one and maybe I go and inhabit another reality, you know? Like who knows? Who really knows? I'm sure people do know or whatever, but to just at this point with all the knowledge that there is right now, it's 2021 and all of the quantum physicists, physicists rather saying the same thing, this is an illusion. And since the beginning of time, the, you know, Egyptians, you know, the Buddhists, the the Hindus all saying that this is an illusion. Um, if you still at this point think that you are the form that you see when you look in the mirror, like, stop it. Stop it, chill, relax. It's not true. It's not true. Anyway, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, God's Debris, read it. Read it a few times because each little like paragraph gives you a lot to think about. Like I said, I'm not gonna really jump into the conclusion. I just wanted to touch about touch up on the whole uh, God having no free will bit because um, that to me was just like poof, mind blowing. Like okay, okay, cool. So if these are facts, right? So God can't be both omniscient and omnipotent, right? There's something that's more powerful than God than is fate, God. No, because if we're defining God as the creator of this reality, right, which the Gnostics talk about, right, the Gnostics, that's what the movies, uh, the Matrix is really about. They say that they say that this is a false, false construct and that the God, the creator of this reality, you know, isn't really the true God. That's the only bit I'm kind of taken from. To me, I still subscribe to like, this is just... We're we're really in the future, okay? Like our consciousness are really like in the future somewhere, and we are just we've just uploaded our consciousness into this simulation, and we're having whatever experience. And I've said this, and even on the other podcast, it's been around since like two thousand and eighteen, I think, or seventeen. Um, but I say that like in the future, right? We have. Humanity has eliminated hunger, you know, um, homelessness, uh, you know, we're, we're not working, you know, hourly wages anymore. We have universal basic income and life is good. We've created a utopia for ourselves, right? In the future. But what is the one thing that you can't get rid of really? It, it's human boredom, right? And when you have things that are too easy, boredom tends to set in. So perhaps the you know, that civilization created this reality to kind of, you know, give it, give them uh, something to play, like something that will be entertaining, to to feel pain and to feel fear. Because in that world, everything is so ordered now and so, you know, perfect. And, you know, they've even conquered death and disease. Nobody gets sick, nobody dies, nobody has to work. It's like, okay, what is there to do? Well, you can paint, right? You can create. And sometimes you might just want to come into the the simulation and live. 
you know, and live a life where you, you know, are a little bit afraid or anxious or whatever. But there's, it's, it's, you know, it's pre-programmed and there's some default settings that you can kind of tweak. And if you've listened this far, then you genuinely have an interest in, okay, how do I switch from, you know, story mode, which is the default setting that the majority of human beings are operating on, right? They're just no free will. I mean, we're all basically are subject to fate and determinist, you know, it is what it is, but there is some wiggle room, right? You can, there's certain things you can do. You can change, you can choose your own destiny, so to speak, but the, but you have to understand that the destiny that you, you get to choose is already prescripted. You just get to choose which one you, which experience you get to have, but it's already prescripted, right? Just kind of like when you go on the Sims, your character can choose any profession at once, but those professions are already pre-programmed into the game. If I go, okay, you want McDonald's or 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 or, or Burger King, um, I'm still controlling your choices because that's all I'm offering, right? So I'm still forcing your hand. So you have some. It's like a like a uh, not a pyramid, but mm, yeah, maybe a pyramid. But it, it you you have some choice, but I'm controlling your choices so to speak. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. You know, to me, some people have said like, how can you believe this and be chill? And I'm like, to me, like the alternative of just thinking like, I, like I have to be in control of everything as opposed to knowing like, no, like it's, it's all good. Like it's all programmed in. And all I have to do is just like, enjoy the ride and I'm not actually going to die after this. Like I don't end, like my consciousness still goes on and that's okay. And yet there's some super spiritual people that goes actually, no, you dissolve into the, to the, to the one. And then you just become like a drop of water in the ocean. Yeah, whatever. I'm not <laughs> trying to hear all that. I mean, maybe yeah, in like, you know, a million years in the, you know, far, far, far future or whatever. I'm just trying to like explore other realities out after earth. Like, I want to explore a reality where people in the reality know that they're in a simulation. Because for whatever reason, we're in this simulation where majority of people don't know that they're in a simulation, which is fine. But I want to see what a world where people know they're in a simulation looks like. And I want to experience that world. You know what I mean? Like, I, like I'm done. Like, I'm tired. Um, and it's been real. Like, it's been fun. And I, there's going to be a lot more stuff that I hope to be able to experience, you know, while I'm here, my last go, it's my, this is my last go. And I, and I plan, I plan, I hope to live a full life and enjoy my last go and enjoy the people I come across with and meet, you know, people and learn from them. Um, but I, I, you know, after this, like I'm trying to check out Game of Thrones world, right? Somebody said something like anything you can imagine exists out there in some universe. And I'm like, word, like dragons, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, I I want to check that out. Um, anyway, um, thank you for listening and, uh, I'm going to try to do another one next week, um, be on top of it or whatever. I just need to manage my time better. I'm working on that free will thing (laughs) of not getting distracted by my thoughts and, oh, I should do this and I should set a goal, write it down and stick with it. But, um, yeah, I'm going to head upstairs and uh, make myself a a sandwich, gluten-free. Thanks for listening.